Hello, welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto from SUNY State University, New York at Erie, formerly known as Erie Community College or ECC. We're a two-year junior community college located just south of Buffalo, New York. Today's presentation is titled The Printing Processes, and the purpose is to provide a basic introductory information about the printing industry and the different printing processes that are available. We're going to list and describe the six major printing processes, and we will compare and contrast them for similarities and differences, and then we can discuss the advantages and strengths of digital printing. So let's first define printing. A real basic definition of printing would be printing transfers ink onto paper. And obviously you can do this by hand, manually. This is what we used to do in terms of calligraphy and scribes for making Bibles and book. And calligraphy means beautiful writing. Why would we want to print? Well, a basic answer is to communicate. We want to share messages and share information. If you're in business, you want to advertise and promote and market. And you want to preserve history and knowledge. And you do that with books that document. So now we can modify the definition of printing of being transferring ink to paper by saying how we do that. And now we can do that with a machine called the printing press. And this printing press will use pressure to make an impression. So Gutenberg's press was a converted wine press for squeezing grapes to make wine. So why do we want to use a machine rather than doing this by hand like the scribes used to do? Well, it's all about mass production. We want productivity, efficiency, speed. We want to lower our costs and our expenses. So it's about the economics of the labor, the time, the materials, and the consumables. So these machines over the years have become more automated. They're using more technology. They're giving us things faster, better, and cheaper. And we're starting to see a lot of robotics now coming into the uh, printing industry. I've always joked that uh, I only want one shift, not two shifts or three shifts, because the more shifts you have, the more people you have, and the more people you have, the more variation you have, and the more variation you have, often you have more problems. So robotics and robots, machines, you know, they don't get tired, they don't complain, they don't make quote-unquote human mistakes. And quite frequently, machines can do things more accurately, more precisely, and with higher quality. A broader definition of printing would be printing transfers colorants onto substrates. So let's define colorants. These colorants could be inks uh, or dyes or pigments. They could be liquid fluids like paints, water, oil, and solvent-based. They could be a paste or they could be a toner, which is a dry powder. These inks can be transparent or opaque. They could be a solid, like a pencil graphite. They could be a crayon, which is like a dye in a wax. The other broader definition would be the substrates. And substrates would be any type of a paper. They could be cellulose fiber made from wood, or they could be a cloth textile made from cotton. They could be metal cans or glass bottles or plastics, films. They could be wood. They could be anything. So anything that can receive, act as a base or act as a carrier for the ink could be a substrate. Now, the major printing processes are letterpress, flexography, sometimes just called flexo, gravure, many times called rotogravure because it's mostly a web roll fed process. A special form of gravure is called intaglio. We have offset lithography, which is the most popular, screen printing, and the new technology is digital, which includes inkjet, laser, and nano. So let's compare. Uh, and when we do the comparison, we're looking for similarities, similarities and differences. So that illustration on the right there with the three circles is a Venn diagram. And it's supposed to represent things that are the same, overlap, and things that are different. So when we compare, we have to compare the image carrier, what carries the image. We have to discuss inking and drying, how you dry the ink. We'll discuss transferring the image, whether we do it directly or indirectly. We'll talk about the substrates. Are there any special needs or requirements? 
the identifiable characteristics of the printing process. So under low power magnification, we should be able to identify the printing process. We'll talk about the quality of the printing when it comes to type and halftone dots, color, the amount of waste, things like that. And we'll briefly discuss the pros and the cons and the strengths and the weaknesses and the advantages and the disadvantages of these printing processes. We'll talk about the market shares, the types of products that they produce and what the trend in that market share is. And finally, we'll talk about if there's a trade organization that represents that segment of the market. So the, the illustration on the left here represents letterpress. And letterpress is a printing process where we use a hard, rigid, either a metal or a plastic relief plate. And a relief plate means that there's a physical, mechanical separation between the image area and the non-image area. So this relief plate will make contact with the ink roller and then make direct contact with the paper with an impression cylinder beneath it. Letterpress is a very old process. It's the oldest and it's a very simple process. Similar to letterpress is flexography or flexo, and it also uses a relief plate, but now the plate is a soft rubber or photopolymer. And there's a very simple inking system here called an analox. It's kind of like a uniformly engraved neural roller that transfers ink to the top of the relief plate. And then again, it makes direct contact with the paper. Again, flexography is almost always web or roll fed. The next printing process is gravure. And gravure has a cylinder where the image is etched or engraved into the surface. And we bathe the entire cylinder into a bath or a trough or a fountain of fluid liquid ink. So ink is everywhere, both in the image area and the non-image area. And then we have a stainless steel doctor blade that will squeegee and wipe clean the outer surface, which happens to be the non-image area. So the non-image area is now clean, leaving ink inside the image area. And that will make direct contact with the paper. Gravure is almost always web or roll fed. Then there's screen printing, another very simple printing process where we have a wooden frame or a metal frame and attached to that frame is some type of a screen mesh. It could be a polyester or a stainless steel metal. We put some type of stencil on that screen that will have open image areas and closed non-image areas. We put ink on the screen and using a rubber squeegee blade, we push down and force ink through the open pores. This again is a direct printing process to the substrate. Next we have offset lithography. This is the most popular printing process. It works on the principles that ink and water don't readily mix, kind of like oil and vinegar on a salad dressing. The plate here is a planographic surface plate. It's flat. So the separation between image and non-image area is done chemically with the ink water balance. We then transfer the image from the plate to the blanket. So this is an intermediate transfer, an indirect transfer. And then from the blanket, we transfer to the paper with an impression back cylinder beneath it. This is typically either a sheet of paper, sheet fed, or it can be a roll or a web of paper. And then finally, we have digital printing. Digital printing is EP electrophotographic, which is most commonly called laser, or it can be inkjet in the abbreviation for inkjet. So inkjet is you're gonna take a fluid liquid and you're gonna squirt it out of a nozzle. So think of it as forming these drops. Electrophotographic, while it's not magnetic, uh, the concept is the same here. There is an electrostatic charge that creates um, attraction and the toner is charged one way. The imaging drum is charged another way. 
So dissimilar attractions attract each other. So just think about static electricity. So let's talk more about the image carrier. In letterpress, the image carrier is relief. It's raised. It's typically a hard, rigid metal we call, or a plastic, and we call it a plate. And the image carrier is static, meaning it never changes. So every revolution, every impression you make should be exactly identically the same. In flexography, we also have a relief image, which is raised. But now we're using a soft rubber or polyester. We still call it a plate, and the image is still static. In gravure, it's also a relief, but now it's the opposite of letterpress and flexography. It's a recessed that makes the image area. And we start off with a copper metal, uh, and then for longevity, we chrome plate it. We call the image carrier and gravure a cylinder, and that image is also static. In screen printing, we have a porous mesh. Uh, we put a stencil on it and we call the image carrier a screen. And that is also static. In offset lithography, a major distinction to the other previous printing processes is that the plate is not reliefed, it's flat. Hence, plano graphic, a plane. So because there is no physical mechanical way of separating or distinguishing the image from the non-image area. We have to do this chemically with water. The plate is typically metal, but it could be a polyester. And we do call the image carrier and offset lithography a plate. And it too is static. Finally, we have digital. And digital is either electrophotographic EP, where we have an OPC drum, an organic photo conducting drum. If it's inkjet or IJ, we have some type of a nozzle jet that will squirt or spray the inkjet out. So the image carrier on electrophotographic will be the drum, and the image carrier and in inkjet will be the head. But the major difference with digital, and this makes it an advantage, is that it can be variable. So that means every revolution, every impression, every page in digital can be different, unique, variable. So we call this variable data printing or VDP. So in summary on this image carrier, four of the printing processes use, well, actually three of the printing processes use a relief. Four of them do something that is physical and mechanical. Also lithography being unique and different uses a flat plate with chemical separation. And finally, digital, again, can be variable. The inking systems for the printing processes, letterpress uses a roller train, many rollers in that train, and it uses a paste ink. Flexography uses a fluid ink, and the key major role here is called the analox roll, and there's only maybe one or two rollers in flexography. In gravure, it also uses a fluid liquid ink, but the entire cylinder gets bathed in the ink, so there are no rollers. And we squeegee off the non-image area, the outer surface of the cylinder, with a doctor blade. In screen printing, we use a thick paste ink, and we force that ink through the open pores of the stencil with a squeegee blade, so there are no rollers in screen printing. In offset lithography, we have a roller train with many rollers. We also use a paste ink. And in digital, because it's a dry toner, it's a powder, we wouldn't typically call that an ink. In an inkjet, we use a fluid liquid ink. So in both EP and IJ, there are no rollers. Now just think about this for a second. Fluids and liquids, if you pour them onto a roller, will just fall right off the roller. So you have to have some other mechanism to transfer a fluid liquid ink. And that's the purpose of either the analox roller or the doctor blade. Transfer method. In letterpress, it's direct. Flexography is direct. Gravure is direct. Screen printing is direct. But in offset lithography, 
the offset means that it's an indirect image transfer from plate to paper. In digital printing, EP or IJ, inkjet, it's non-contact. So either you have contact or non-contact. And if you have contact, it's either impact with a lot of pressure or it's non-impact. In the case of uh, electrophotographic, you just need to gently, softly touch so that the electrostatic charges can transfer. Now, in a direct printing process, the image transfer is wrong reading, which means the plate image has to be wrong reading so that when it transfers directly to the paper, it'll be right reading. However, in an indirect printing process like offset lithography, the image on the plate is right reading. When it transfers to the blanket, it'll be wrong reading. And when it transfers to the paper again, it'll now be right reading. Substrate surface, it would be great if the printing process can print on any substrate, any paper, but that's not always the case. In letterpress, we can print on almost any type of a paper or substrate. In flexography, we prefer to have smooth types of papers, typically coated. In gravure, because we have direct transfer from those engraved cells or wells in that cylinder, our paper has to be very smooth, very flat. So the type of paper we want to use is something called super calendared. It's abbreviated SC. Screen printing can print on any type of surface. And in offset lithography, because we have that soft, resilient, pliable rubber blanket, we too can print on any type of a surface, even the textured surfaces like text papers. However, uh, because offset lithography uses water, we want to make sure that the paper is sized so that it has some resistance to water so that it doesn't be, cause problems with water absorption. And in digital EP, we care about the electrostatic charges in the paper. So moisture content is important. And in inkjet, certainly you may require, you may need special types of paper because of how the paper absorbs the inkjet. So if you don't need a special type of paper, you may need a special coating on the paper. That coating could be done prior to the printing or that coating could be done as part of the printing with a special nozzle uh, jet or head. We should be able to identify any printing process because of its characteristics. In a minute here, I'm going to show you some micro photographs or photo micrographs of the different types of printing processes. But let me just explain what we have here. In letterpress, you can identify the process because the outer edges have a halo ring. In flexography, they also have a halo ring, but it's much broader. It's much wider. It looks like it had a stroke applied to it. In gravure, the edges are serrated or they're sawtoothed or they're jagged. They look stair-stepped. In screen, it's very similar to gravure. You have that serration, sawtooth, jagged from the mesh threads of the screen. Offset lithography is extremely crisp, very sharp, the most amount of detail of any printing process. And then digital, because you're using uh, electrostatic charges or you're using a fluid liquid that's been sprayed, the edges of type in digital can be soft. Uh, they can be fuzzy. So let's take a look at these. Here's an example of flexography. The image to the left is at 10x magnification and the image at the right is at 40x magnification. And as you can clearly see, every image on the outer perimeter or border looks like it's been stroked. And that's because the ink that was on the surface is being squeezed outward when it goes under impression between the plate and the inking rollers and between the plate and the substrate. In gravure, every image has been screened. So you're going to see this sawtooth serrated stair-stepped pattern to every image, not just the half tones, the dots, but also to type and text. In screen printing, there's going to be a similar appearance to flexography, but what you're seeing here are the edges of the threads of the screen fabric mesh itself. The other thing about screen is it has a very thick ink film thickness. So you might actually be able to feel how thick the ink is on the substrate. In lithography, 
the edges are very crisp, sharp, hard. And because of that, offset lithography gives you the most amount of detail when it comes to text and even halftone dots. Here's an example of digital laser toner. Now again, remember these are dry powder and they transfer by static electricity. So you may not get these very hard edges, you get these soft fuzzy edges. And in digital inkjet, again, you are kind of like using a garden hose to spray ink over to the substrate. So again, you get these soft fuzzy edges. The relative age of the printing processes here? Well, a lot of presses certainly the oldest. It dates back to 1440 when Gutenberg invented movable type. Flexography is from the 1900s. Gravure is from the 1900s. Screen printing is from around 1910. Offset lithography dates back to 1800s for lithography, printing with stone. And it dates back to 1910 when it started to use the offset transfer process. So prior to 1910, it was just simply lithography transferring directly. And then at 1910, it became offset lithography. Technology is digital, of course. And uh, I'm going to say that production color printing presses came out around 1993. I vividly remember being at Rochester Institute of Technology or RIT when we got an indigo and a Zycon printing press. Let's look at the quality of type. Letterpress has good quality type. Flexography is poor, gravure is poor, and screen is poor. Offset lithography has the best quality when it comes to type, and digital is fair. Let's look at the quality of halftone images. Letterpress is poor, typically because it has a coarse, low screen ruling frequency, LPI, lines per inch. Flexography is good and getting better all the time because of uh, advances in the technology for plate making. Gravure is the best when it comes to image quality for photographic quality. And it's because the inks being fluid liquid mix on the paper surface. And it almost looks like it's continuous tone, contone, or CT. Screen printing has poor halftone image, again, because of very low uh, LPI. Offset lithography has good halftone image photographic quality. We often print at screen rulings of 150, 175, 200, perhaps even 300 lines per inch. And digital has good halftone image, but it's not because it has high LPI, but because it's a multi-bit technology. So every printing process except for digital is single bit. Uh, actually, let me take that back. There's a form of gravure where we can vary the depth of the cells. And when you vary the depth of the cells, you're varying the ink film thickness, the IFT, which also makes that multi-bit. But in general terms, think of everything being single bit binary. Either you have image or you have non-image area. Either you have ink or you have no ink, except for digital, where I can put multiple layers of toner or multiple layers of fluid liquid inkjet down. Waste and scrap is important. Letterpress is low. Flexography has some. Gravure is low. Screen is low. But also lithography, unfortunately, has the most amount of waste and scrap. You're going to need probably about 100 sheets to get the color and the make ready to fit. Once you get your color okay, now you're into the production running mode, and you might need as much as 5% running waste. Every time uh, a sheet-fed offset lithographic press stops or gets interrupted from a feeder trip, sometimes called a knockoff or a trip-off, and you start back up again, that critical, delicate ink-water balance has been upset. So it's going to take some sheets to uh, return back to that stability. That could be as much as 12 sheets. So every time the press stops and restarts, you're going to have to remove 12 sheets because the color is not correct. And digital has the least amount of scrap and waste because of all the sophisticated automated technology that's inside. On the very first sheet out, the output, you should, in theory, 
be in register fitting and be the color matching so you have very little if any waste and scrap okay operator skill level <clears throat> this is the amount of knowledge you have and the amount of experience you have it's low for letterpress you need some in flexography you need some in gravure uh, it's low in screen printing but the most amount of knowledge the most amount of experience you need in terms of operator skill level will be for offset lithography because it's not only physical and mechanical but it's also chemical that ink water balance and in digital i'm going to suggest that it's the least amount of knowledge and experience you need because all you really have to do and again i'm oversimplifying here i'm being dramatic to make a point here but basically all you have to do is push a button the print button the go button and and you're all set here's a pie chart that represents the market share for the printing processes now depending on the trade association or organization you're referencing or the consultant that you're talking to these numbers vary but typically half or over 50 percent of everything that gets printed gets printed by offset lithography flexography is about 20 percent digital is 14 percent that sounds a little high to me i wouldn't be surprised if that reference or resource i was quoting here was a digital association gravure is about 10 percent screens three percent and letterpress is only one percent so let's talk about trends here the trends for letterpress keep declining flexography is strong and growing because of flexible packaging gravure is holding steady screen printing is holding steady offset lithography unfortunately is in the decline what is taking away some of the work from offset lithography it's flexography and packaging and it's digital now digital in terms of a market share trend is in the incline it's increasing it's growing and inkjet especially is growing so to represent growth here i put ep laser with a single plus and i put inkjet ij with a double plus sign and a bold upward trend now what's interesting about digital taking work away from offset lithography is that that that's not variable data printing that's just static digital printing out with the old in with the new i can remember that the buffalo news newspaper didn't convert over from rotary letterpress to web offset lithography until 2003. so obviously color sells and the more color pages you can have the more advertising you can charge in terms of market share i found this old source from 1985 and in 1985 well just contrast from 1955 to 1985-ish. Offset lithography went from 33% of the market share to 70% of the market share. So the point I'm trying to make here is just like lithography took away work from letterpress, letterpress still exists today. And just like digital is taking work away from offset lithography, lithography will have a long and prosperous life. It's not going away soon. Digital has its unique market and it's basically for variable data, and it's for short run length. Also, lithography is for long run lengths, and there's a lot of printing out there that needs tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of impressions, and digital is not gonna be economical and compete with that type of printing process. PIA, the Printing Industries of America, in 2016 had some data that said that we employed over 446,000 people in the industry, that there was over 25,500 printing establishments or companies, and that we generated over $82 billion in sales. In terms of run length, the quantity, the general trend in the industry is for shorter runs, less impressions. And that's because of JIT or JIT, which is just in time, rather than over printing and warehousing and putting stuff material printed material and in inventory or stocking it where it might become obsolete and old people want to have current accurate information so we print more frequently at lower quantities so typically letterpress is short run length flexography is long run length gravure is very long run length screen would be short Offset lithography would be somewhere between medium to long run lengths. 
and digital would be extremely short run lengths. It could be as short as one. Make me one copy. Make me one print. So really, we're starting to see where the, the, the technologies are breaking apart for the run length quantities. Digital is for short runs. And also, orthography is for medium to long runs. Types of products that these printing technologies would print? Well, letterpress with only 1% of the market share typically is for specialty things like high quality invitations, wedding invitations, and things like that. Flexography is growing because of flexible packaging for wrappers, bags, labels, pouches, things like that. Gravure, the products you would find in Gravure would be catalogs, some magazines, newspaper inserts, screen printing, the types of products you will find there will be anything that you can think of, any shape, any substrate, so they can print on three-dimensional objects and materials. That's mostly industrial printing. Also, orthography, the typical products here will be books and magazines and newspapers, brochures, pamphlets, folders, things like that. And digital is short run, on demand, so we find signage, posters, and things like that. Now, signage and posters used to be done by screen, but digital is taking away a lot of work from the old screen market because of the wide format, the grand format inkjet printers that are either roll or flatbed. Industry segments by markets. Now, in a previous presentation, we had a detailed conversation about this. But again, the major industry segments will be quick printers, people like Office Max or Office Depot, Staples, UPS, FedEx, who bought out Kinkos, Vistaprint. Implants would be any large insurance companies or banks, school letters that are printing newsletters. In Buffalo, New York, I think about BOCES, uh, the Board of Cooperative Education Services, where they service, I think, about 21 school districts. Commercial printing, which is what most sheet-fed offset lithography is. Brochures, flyers, pamphlets, folders, booklets, direct mail postcards. Then publication would be newspapers and magazines and books and catalogs. All of those are on a decline because of smartphone, cell phones, social media, where we prefer to get our information off the internet. Packaging is in very strong growth mode. Folding cartons, labels, sleeves, wrappers, and bags, much of that is also being done by flexography. Let's just talk about our local regional print market here in Buffalo, New York. The letter press printers are people like Bates Jackson and Benton Announcements. Flexography would be Tapecon, Ginsler Graphics, which is now Ginsler International, which just recently changed to Resource Label Group. Flexel Transparent, which just recently changed its name to CP Packaging. The Gravure printer in town it used to be Arcata Graphics, but they've been gone for quite some time now. So now it's Brook and Whittle. Screen printing, the big one I can think of is be DKM AdArt. Also lithography, there's several. We got the Zenger Group, Ashton Potter, Mod Pack Packaging, and Keller Brothers and Miller on Franklin Street, KBM. And digital, the big printer would probably be CopyMail. Apologize to the local Buffalo printers if I didn't include your name on this list. This, the purpose of the slide is just to let the students know that we have local printers that fit into each of these categories for printing process group. And every year, Printing Impressions magazine lists and ranks the 400 largest printers. You should know that in 2019, the largest printer in the country was R.R. Donnelly. Number two was Graphic Packaging International, GPI. Number three was Quad Graphics. So you can take a look at their sales and millions of dollars. So that's billion, right? Six billion dollars. And you can see the number of employees that they have. Almost 40,000 employees. And you can see the number of plants that they have. 302 plants. Again, based on the printing impressions ranking of printers, regionally, locally in Western New York, which would include Buffalo and Rochester, we got some big players. Hammer Packaging in Rochester uh, is ranked 43 with sales of $122 million. They're basically a 
cut sheet label printer, labels that will go on canned goods, food goods. Also in Rochester is Flower City Printing. They're ranked 70 with sales of $74 million, very large format printing presses. In Rochester is Diamond Packaging. I worked for them for three years in quality assurance as a senior, a senior process engineer. They're ranked 85 with $64 million. They're a folding carton packaging printer, exclusively Heidelberg sheet fed presses, uh, ultraviolet UV carrying. In Buffalo is Mod Pack, another folding carton packaging printer. They're ranked 95 with sales of $57 million. By the way, just a footnote here. The big printer in Buffalo many years ago was uh, FN Burt, a folding carton packaging printer. But when they went bankrupt, a lot of their market share was taken by Buffalo, Rochester, these two printers here. Also in Rochester is Mercury Printing. They're ranked at 102 with $53 million. What makes Mercury Printing famous and notable is that they are the first United States installation of the Landa Press, which is nanolithography technology. Very exciting new technology. In Buffalo, ranked at 145th with $34 million is CompuMail Dual Printing. Dual Printing has recently been sold to a printer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In Buffalo, we have TapeCon, ranked at 195 at $24 million in sales. Now, TapeCon is both a screen printer and a flexo printer, but their flexo printing is really more of an industrial uh, printing uh, where they're actually creating industrial products. Buffalo, ranked at 207 with $21 million in sales, is the Zenger Group. The Zenger Brothers bought out Boncraft. Uh, the Bubar Brothers, Boncraft was located right here in Orchard Park, New York, not too far from Erie Community College. In Rochester, we have Canfield and Tack, rate, ranked at 264 with $16 million. And in Rochester, we have Colbert Press, ranked at 330 with $12 million. So the thing that's interesting on this slide here is regionally in Western New York, Rochester and Buffalo, we have some very large printers. Trade organizations, there is none for letterpress. For flexography, it's FTA, which is the Flexographic Technical Association. There is their website, flexography.org. They are responsible for publishing a document, a specification, a standard called FIRST, which is Flexographic Image Requirements, Specifications, and Tolerances. Gravure is GAA.org, which is the Gravure Association of America. Screen printing was sgia.org, which is Specialty Graphic Imaging Association, which in this year, 2020, merged with PIA to become a new trade association organization called Printing United Alliances. Offset lithography, which would include SWAP specifications for web offset publication, SNAP specifications for newspaper advertising publication, Grackle, which is the general requirements for the applications of commercial offset lithography. They are all basically owned by ID Alliance. And then we have PIA, which is the Printing Industries of America, which I, which I mentioned earlier has merged with SGI to become PUA. And in digital, uh, they would be under the category of SGIA also. Allied Industries, these are industries that provide support and services. Um, trade shops, binderies and letter shops, mailers, specialty things, equipment manufacturers, consumable supply retailers for ink and paper and plates and blankets and rollers and fountain solution. These are people like Verative and Unisource and Pittman and GE Richards and Oldham Group. That's where most printers buy their supplies. Okay, let's bring some closure and summary here. We know that lithography means stone writing. Lithos means stone. Graphy means writing. It's a flat plane, flat surface, so we call it planography. There is no physical mechanical relief or separation, so it has to be done chemically. The chemical separation is going to work on the principle that oil and water don't readily mix. Think about Italian salad dressing. You'd have to shake that up to get those two to 
become a suspension or an emulsion. So the chemical we're going to use is basically water, 95% water with only 5% chemicals. That's our fountain solution. Offset means that the image transfer is not direct from the plate to the paper. Instead, it's indirect. So we're going to use this intermediate rubber blanket between the plate and the paper. We're going to need some pressure to squeeze that ink into the paper. We call that impression from the back cylinder. Now remember, offset means it's indirect, so that means that the plate will be right reading, the image on the blanket will be wrong reading, so that the image on the paper will ultimately be right reading. So I included this photograph of an ambulance, and if you look at its front hood, the grill there, you can see that they printed the word ambulance backwards so that when you're driving in your car and you look in your rear view mirror, it will now be right reading. So why is offset lithography so popular today? Over 50% of the market share? It wasn't, it's not because of the printing process. If you actually look at the printing process itself, it's very complex, it's very difficult. It has that delicate critical ink water balance. It's based on chemistry. It, it, it generates a lot of waste. You have waste during make ready. You got to get the register to fit. You got to get the color to match. It generates waste during the production run. Every time you have an interruption or you stop, you have a knockoff or a trip off, you generate waste because you lost your ink water balance. So what really made offset lithography popular? Pre-press. Plate making. So to make a plate in pre-press, it was inexpensive, very cheap, just a couple dollars. It was easy and simple, and it was fast. That's what made offset lithography popular. What is going to make digital popular? The same reasons. It's easy. You just push the print button, push the go button. You don't have to worry about make ready. There's no plate to make. There's no register to fit. There's no color to match. That first sheet out should be in register and to color with no print defects. The problem with digital will be, as we will talk about more in more detail in another lecture, is it's slow and it's going to be expensive for large quantities. So let's talk about what makes digital popular. It's a simple process. It's easy because of all the automated technology inside the box. There's no plates to make or hang. There's no register during make ready or run. There's no color during make ready or run. There's less waste and spoilage. There's no inks to wash up. There's no shutdown. There's no waiting for the inks to dry. It's a fast, quick turnaround so we can do on demand while you wait, come back in one hour service. A big advantage is variable data printing or VDP. However, the vast majority, the major amount of digital, over 90% is static. So that does not make it an advantage. Thank you. I appreciate your attendance and participation by watching this video. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative. And as always, please provide feedback for continuous improvement. Until we meet again, have a good day. Bye now.